Hello, this is Stephen Bedard, and I want to talk to you about disability, specifically how we refer to people with disabilities. I just said people with disabilities. That's an example of how we speak about people with disabilities. That's an example of what is called person first. So we say a person with a disability, a person with autism. Uh, that is an attempt to put the personhood of the person at the beginning to emphasize that they are a person and not defined by their disability. And that is something that is very common, especially within the disability ministry, disability theology communities, as an attempt to show respect to people uh, with disabilities, to emphasize that they are first and foremost people. They are human beings. They are not defined by their disability. However, there are many people within the disability community that prefer something else. They prefer an identity first language. So they would like to be referred to as a disabled person or an autistic person. And their argument there is that uh, disabilities are nothing to be ashamed of. They are a part of their identity and they're proud of it. And they would give an example of uh, giving a comparison to perhaps uh, some of the ways that we refer to race. So we would not refer to a, a person with black skin. We would say a black person. And we would do that because we acknowledge that there is value in being black. That identity is important and it is good and there's nothing to be ashamed of to be black. And so we would say uh, a black person and say that that is a good way to refer to them. So if that's the case, shouldn't we say a disabled person, an autistic person? I find this especially in my conversations with people in the autism community. Uh, and again, this divides very often between uh, parents and people who actually have autism. Parents and probably a lot of, of um, uh, doctors and uh, people who are, are caring for people with autism would lean towards that uh, person first language. They would want to say, uh, talk about their son or their daughter with autism rather than their autistic son or daughter. And uh, the same thing maybe with doctors. They would refer to their patient with autism, not their autistic patient. However, within the aut autism community, there is a lot of pride about being neurodivergent. And I mean pride in a, in a positive way. Sometimes that word's used in a negative way, but here I mean in a, in a positive way. They see value in their neurodivergency, that they have autism, that their brain is wired in a different way. And there's nothing to be ashamed of for that. That uh, get, is something that is uh, good for them. It is something that makes them unique, uh, helps them to uh, be able to, to stand out, and they want to be referred to as an autistic person. In fact, sometimes uh, people will not even use person. They will refer to themselves as an autistic, and uh, that really is going in the opposite direction of person-first language. It's the same thing with uh, people who... Uh, who have been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is uh, now just uh, collapsed into autism, but there was a time when Asperger's was a, a separate diagnosis. And uh, there are still a lot of people uh, who have what would have been Asperger's who still hold on to that. They like that label perhaps more than autism. And so they wouldn't want to refer to themselves as a person with Asperger's. In fact, they might go so far as to say they are an Aspie, uh, a short form for Asperger's, and they would affectionately refer to one another as an Aspie. There's an Aspie culture of people who have Asperger's, that form of autism. So what is the proper way? Should you refer to someone as a person with a disability? 
do you refer to someone as a disabled person? Is one right? Is one wrong? Well, you know what? I have no idea. I really do not. I've received a lot of pushback from people in the uh, disabled community who would prefer identity first. Uh, I've also received pushback from people within the uh, disability ministry and disability theology community saying that the only respectful way is person first. So I would definitely suggest asking someone what they would prefer about this. And I actually did a Twitter poll. It was interesting about uh, half of the people uh, who had disabilities, half the people uh, preferred uh, identity first and about a third preferred uh, person first and the rest just didn't care. They could go either way. Uh, so you can ask a person what they would prefer uh, to be called. Uh, I mean, the ideal preference is always call them by their name, but when you're referring to them, perhaps in a, in a blog post or in a paper or in a presentation, uh, how do they want to be referred to? Person first or identity first? But when you're blogging or you're writing, you don't always know who your audience is and who uh, is going to be offended by the language you have. And the, the truth is you're probably going to offend someone. Someone is going to be offended if you use identity first language. Someone is going to be offended if you use person first language. And so it is a complex thing. And we just need to be aware that this conversation is going on. I think it's an ever changing situation. Uh, pay attention to who you are speaking to and perhaps if it is in an academic setting that is looking at disability theology, they may have guidelines that you have to use person first language, then you, you follow that. Uh, if you are referring to or you're addressing a uh, disability community, you might want to look and first of all see in general how they uh, are, refer to themselves, but that might be a time where you are using identity first language. And it, again, and it, it differs from, uh, from disability to disability. Uh, there are uh, people in the deaf community would uh, very often refer to themselves identity first. Uh, same with the, in the blind community, uh, we refer to a blind person, not a person with blindness. Uh, but there might be some other disabilities that have not gone that far. So basically, you have to do your homework. You have to figure out what's going on. Ideally, though, uh, just focus on being respectful. Have that posture of wanting to learn and not to impose your own agenda. And if you do that, I think that you will go in the right direction. Thank you for listening to this. I'd encourage you to check out my website, Disability Comes to Church. And you can find that at disabilityandchurch.com. Thank you and God bless.